Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Were you ever in Lightroom and you're just bopping around the menu system and you happen to be in the library module and you looked at the library menu and you went down a ways and you saw flat field correction and you wondered what that is? And now in my case, it's grayed out, but still, maybe wondering what that is. Well, as you probably know, lens is vignette. It really doesn't matter what lens it is and what camera, it's going to have a little bit of a vignette to it. And Lightroom has a lot of tools to fix that vignetting. If you go over to the develop module, if you go to lens corrections and you're using a DSLR, all you need to do is click on enable profile corrections and it should fix that vignetting. In this case, this was a mirrorless camera. It was a Fujifilm X-T4 and the lens profile is built in so I don't really have to do anything. Well, there's a problem with that sometimes. Uh, first of all, not all lenses are created equal, meaning my Fujifilm 35mm f1.4 lens may not be exactly like your Fujifilm 35mm f1.4 lens. Even though they're built to very tight specs, there is a little bit of wiggle room there, so they're not really exact. And when you apply a profile correction, either manually uh, with a DSLR or automatically with a mirrorless camera and lens, uh, that lens profile is more of a general fix for that lens, and it may not be precise. The other issue is you may be using a lens that doesn't have a lens profile built in, or it's not available. If you're using, let's say, an older lens, um, and it's on a DSLR, your DSLR um, isn't going to know what lens is on there, right? And you're going to have to go through and try to find a lens. It may not be available. And you're going to have to then to go to the manual uh, controls and do some manual distortion control and so on and vignetting control there. Um, same thing with a mirrorless camera. You could be using a really old lens that doesn't have any uh, electronics in it. So there's no built-in lens profile. The camera's not going to know what lens is on there to write it to the raw file. And you're going to have to go and manually start trying to fix it. And the other issue that lens profile corrections in Lightroom or really any application doesn't take care of is color shift. Often when a lens is vignetting around the edges it's also shifting the color a little bit and it's my understanding it most often will shift the edges towards cyan especially in the shadows. So lens profile corrections does not correct for that period even automatic profile corrections. So that's where this flat field correction comes in. Not only will it fix the vignetting, it will also fix any color shifts as well. Now to use it or to do it, again you have to be in the library module, but before you even get into Lightroom you have to do some test shots. And what I did is this morning I was in my studio and against my seamless white paper backdrop I just made sure it was evenly lit and I took some test shots. And as you could see with this shot, the edges are a little darker and this was a mirrorless camera and supposedly the lens profile is built in and lens profile is applied but we still have some vignetting on the edges. Now those of you that really could perceive color uh, to a high degree you may notice that there might be a little color shift as well. Personally I don't see any but I don't have the best color vision. Now with that said this is where the flat field correction comes in. So you need to do some test shots. Now you don't need seamless white paper, you could just use a poster board. Just make sure the poster board is evenly lit and take some test shots and you need a test shot for every aperture. Um, the reason is because the vignetting varies by aperture. Not only that, if you're using a zoom lens, you're going to have to take test shots at varying focal lengths as well. So this is probably why flat field correction isn't widely used because you need a lot of test shots. <laughs> and not only that, if you have, let's say, this 35 millimeter lens and I have multiple Fuji cameras, I'd have to do test shots on all the different cameras as well because as I mentioned, the camera and the lens aren't always perfectly specced. So uh, the Fujifilm, let's say, on X-T4 camera, the first camera, may be slightly different than that same lens on an X-T3 or an X-T1 or something like that. So you're going to have to do a lot of test shots. Now in this case, 
This test shot's at f5.6, and luckily 35 millimeter list lens is a fixed focal length lens, so I didn't have to take different focal length shots as well. What we did then after I left my studio on my way home, I stopped here and I took some shots at f5.6. Now, again, supposedly this lens profile was built in and applied to this image already. It's a raw file with, um, I don't, I didn't do any, it's showing I did adjustments to it, but I, I didn't do any adjustments to this. It's a reset on it. I don't recall doing anything. So no adjustments were done to this image at all. So now what we need to do is use this uh, correction that's built into Lightroom with our test shot to fix it. So to use it, what you need to do is select your test shot first or last. It has to be either the first image in the series or the last image in the series. So you could do this to more than one image at a time. I'm just going to do it to one image. So if I had a whole bunch of images down here in the film strip, this test shot needs to be either the first image or the last image. In this case, it's the first image. Then I'm going to select the other image. So they're both selected. Now we're in the library module. We're going to go up to library. And now you could see that flat field correction is active. And I'll click on that and you have some options. By default, this is what you should see, these options. No, none of these boxes checked and everything like this. Now, first of all, color only correct color cast. You have the option to only fix the color cast, not to fix the actual vignetting, um, you know, uh, luminance wise. And I'm going to leave that unchecked. I want to fix everything. Uh, only correct raw files. If I by chance had any JPEGs or TIFF files selected down here, I will ignore those if I check that box. Delete originals after successful correction. This is where it's really weird. Um, Obviously, I don't want to delete the original, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Checked, and you're going to see what it does. It does something really stupid, but I'll show you when, we're, when we do it. File extension, you have the choice of lowercase or uppercase DNG. Um, compatibility, that's the default. I'll leave it there. That's the default. Embed fast load da data's default, and those by default are off. I'll just leave it. So these are all the default settings. I'm just going to leave it just like that and click OK. Now when I click OK, you're going to see a status bar in the top left hand corner come because it's creating this new DNG file with these flat field corrections done to it. And what I'm going to do though is I'm going to enlarge the film strip down here, have it blown up, and I want you to look at the actual image in the film strip and you'll see it change. All right, so I'm going to click OK right now. Okay, did you see that? It got a little bit brighter, didn't it? Now, there's still only two images down here in the film strip. When I click on the new image, this is the DNG. Where did my raw file go? Now remember, I did not check that box to delete the raw file, but the raw file is gone. What it did is it deleted it from Lightroom, but it's still on your hard drive in the exact same place it was. It's just no longer in Lightroom. Why it does that, I don't know. To get it back, really all you need to do is go to the folder that it was in. In this case, I called it Working Folder. This is my folder when I do videos, right? So I'm going to right-click right on that folder and go down to Synchronize Folder. When you do that, it's going to import a new photo, one of them, and that's it. So we'll just synchronize. Do that, and there it is. Now there is the original RAW file. It's back in Lightroom. Now you can see, look at the image itself. There's the original RAW file. Here's our field corrected file, original raw file, field corrected file, and so on. Now, one thing I want to take note, I did a lot of experimentations with this. It's kind of hard to get perfect exposure on a white piece of paper. Um, I shot manually and did varying exposures. I had it like perfectly paper white. Really, it doesn't matter much what the exposure was, as long as it's not like excessively overexposed or excessively underexposed. As long as Lightroom could see the difference, the, I guess the percentage difference uh, between the middle and the edges, you're fine. So it doesn't matter, like in this case, this image looks slightly underexposed. It doesn't matter. I've done this field correction with images, with these test images that were brighter and darker and it did the exact same correction to the 
actual raw file. So just wanted to bring that up. Don't worry about um, your exposure too much. Just make sure it's as close as possible and you'll be fine. Now again, here is our field corrected image, the DNG file, and here is our original raw file. DNG, original raw, and so on. So you can see how it corrects this uh, vignetting, even though the built-in lens corrections were applied uh, to the image, it just fine-tuned it, I guess you could say. And if there was any color shift, it took care of that as well. Now again, this was an unprocessed RAW file, so I could continue my processing on from this point. So I hope that helps you better understand what this flat field correction is and how to use it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.